All right, so in this video, I'm gonna show you how to create an array formula that will give you an effect of automatically dragging down your formulas. So you'll see what I mean in a second. So usually when we make formulas in our spreadsheets, like in Google Sheets, we go here, for example, let's say I have sales and I have quantity. Maybe I want to divide my sales by quantity to get some number that's going to be per piece. So the formula doesn't matter here so much. The idea here, if I did an equal sign, I could say take this sales number divided by this quantity number. And if I'd enter, that's going to give me whatever that's supposed to be. And if I take that number and if I drag this down, it will just basically give me all of these for all of these rows at the same time. Now let me just convert this to currency really quickly here. So what I want to do, I want this to work as we add more data. I want this to just automatically drag down this formula. So that I'm going to do using an array formula. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just clear all of this and go back. And instead of creating this formula as a regular single liner formula, I'm going to use an array. And the way I'm going to do that array, I'm basically going to say, let's take all of this, basically this entire column of values, and I'm going to divide it by this other entire column of values. So right now, if I would enter, you'll see that all I get is the first value out of that list. But I can change that by wrapping this entire thing in array formula function to explain that this is supposed to work as an array formula. And now if I hit enter, you'll see it's dragging this down. But if you look like in the second row right here, there is no formula. So if you look here, it's just a number. The formula is actually just in this first cell. It just outputs the entire array and drags the whole thing down pretty much. So that's great, but we probably want to do this in a way that if we add more numbers here, this works for these new rows, which now, as you can see, doesn't. And the reason it doesn't is because when I made this, I selected basically the data to go until here. And the way I can basically send this all the way down, I can just remove my end row references from both of these ranges. So I'll remove this 12 from here, this 12 from here to send both of those all the way down. And if I would enter right now, it will basically send that all the way down. The only problem is, it's now also going to go all the way down, meaning it's going to use all of these as formulas as well, which is the same thing that would happen if I just made a basic formula, this divided by this, and then I kept dragging it down more because we're dividing this cell by this cell. And in this cell, there is nothing. It treats this blank cell as a zero. And when we divide number by a zero, we get division by zero error. So that's what's happening here. So what we want to do, we want to somehow control this so that when it goes over this lines with data, we want to stop this happening and filling up all of these errors in here. So what we can do to make this happen. So let me explain this with a single formula logic, and then we'll try to move that to this array logic. So if I did this with a single formula and I was trying to still do this divided by this and drag it down again, we would get that error. But what we could do instead, we could just wrap this entire thing in an if statement. Instead of just doing this formula right away, let's just verify and check if one of these cells has some content. So I could say if this quantity equals to double quotes, so basically I'm checking if that quantity is blank, comma, then we're going to just keep it blank, comma. Otherwise, I can do the formula and the formula was Let's take this and divide it by this. So using this if statement, we can control that if this cell is blank, then let's just leave it blank. Otherwise, let's do this. So if I had enter right now, you'll see it does this. But if I drag this formula down, by the time we hit here, because this cell right here is blank, it's just going to leave it empty. So now let's try to do that same thing as an array. So I'm going to go back here. And I'm going to remove all of this, start over again. And instead of this array formula function, I'm going to start with an if function. Open parentheses. The first one is, again, logical test. But right now, we're going to check against the whole column. So I'm going to check 
if this entire column here, and to refer to the whole column, I'm gonna get rid of the end reference, that 15, so send it all the way down. I'm gonna say if that equals to double quotes, means blank, comma, then I want to leave it blank, double quotes, comma, otherwise I want to take this entire column, and I can do that again by removing this end reference, and divide it by this entire column, and again, remove the end reference for this one as well. Close parentheses. First parentheses is closing my if function right here. I need another parentheses to close this array formula function. So I'm gonna do that as well. Hit enter, and that should now send this formula down. And you can see how these cells are now staying blank because there's nothing going on in here. So now if we go and add something here and add that should work. This will also work if we don't type anything here and type here, because the condition we're checking, remember, to make sure that this is just not blank. And that created this effect of dragging our formula down based on this. So if we remove some of this, see, it will also remove that whole dragging down effect, so it will just keep this empty. So you can do this only for functions that actually do accept arrays and work with arrays it's not gonna work for everything. So for example, if I wanted to make sure that both of these must be filled in for this to work, then the regular way to do that would be to do like if, do an or function and say, if this equals blank, comma, or this equals blank, so or will control this is blank or that is blank, this is just closing that or function, comma, then I wanna keep it blank, comma, otherwise I want to do what I wanted to do, which is this divided by this. So now I'm making sure both of them are supposed to be filled in. So if I do this and I drag this formula down, this will work, as you can see. And what's gonna happen if I just type a number here, now it's still not gonna do anything, which is this one. This is that old formula. And if I type something in here, you'll see that this starts working because now both of them are filled in. Now for any of these values, if they're not here, this doesn't do anything. So this was an example of creating an OR function. But the problem with that is that this is not gonna be something that you can translate to an array. The reason for that is because OR function doesn't work with arrays. So if I try to do this in an array way, so just trying to convert this whole thing again, so I'm gonna do if, right, the same way I did in that formula, and I'll say or, open parentheses, and in or I'm gonna check this equals blank, comma, or this, again, remove the end reference, equals blank, close the or function, then comma, let's keep it blank, comma, otherwise let's take this whole column and divide it by this column. And remove the end reference, close parentheses for if, close parentheses for array formula, hit enter, and as you can see, it does not work because or function does not accept arrays. So what you have to do, you have to find some other ways to handle this that do handle arrays. So if the function doesn't handle arrays, you cannot do this. So the way you can find out if your function accepts arrays or it doesn't accept arrays is by simply doing this. Just use the function by itself. So if I just took this or function inside of an array formula to test what happens, if this were to work, it should basically output the entire array of, in this case, trues or falses. But it does not, it only gives us the first one, which means this function does not accept arrays. So what we can do, we can do some trickery here. Again, I'm gonna do this separately on the side and then convert it to an array. And I can simply just check, is this equal to blank, right? And that gives me false. I'm gonna take that and wrap it in parentheses and put double negative in front of it. And what that's gonna do, it's gonna convert falses to zeros and trues to ones. So if I drag this down, see basically all of these are not blank, so I'm getting zero, but if I keep dragging down, these are ones because these are blanks. So let me try to do that same thing for quantity, so I'm gonna do equals, double negative, and in parentheses I'm gonna create my test, I'm gonna check is that equal to blank, 
and we get our zeros and ones. So you can see because this is blank and this is not blank, we get zero and one here. So what we could do with these two tests, let me actually get rid of this column. So what we can do, I'm gonna go back and change the logic of this array a little bit. So instead of checking if something is blank, I'm gonna actually check if something is not blank. So instead of equal to, I'm gonna say, is it not equal to blank? So that will just basically switch our ones and zeros. And I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna say, is this not equal to blank? And that's gonna switch our ones and zeros again. So in this case, one means it's not blank, zero means it is blank. And then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna just do a multiplication. I'm gonna say, let's take this and multiply it by this. So if I'd enter and drag it down, so what's gonna happen when we multiply one by one, we'll get a one. When we multiply one by zero, we'll get a zero. When we multiply zero by zero, we get a zero. So what's going to happen is that in cases when both of these are filled in, we should be getting one here. And if one of them is not, we should be getting a zero. Let me actually add something here so we can have an example of that too. See, these are all zeros because of that multiplication. And these are all ones. Ones are the ones when both of them are filled in. Now I'm gonna create this thing with an array. So I'm gonna remove all of this and start over again. So the first one was an array formula. In my array formula, let me actually put that array formula function here. So for this array formula function, the first one was that first test. So it was double negative. And in this double negative, I was checking if this, and in this case, it's an array, so it's gonna be the whole column, is not equal to blank. That's it. So if I'd enter right now, it will just output that ones and zeros for just this column. So anything that's not blank is a one, everything that's blank is a zero. So that's good. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take this and wrap it in parentheses again to group it together. So sorry about that, bunch of stuff showed up there, but because you have too many parentheses, those things happen. So now I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna multiply it by a second set of parentheses. And in this parentheses, I'm gonna do that second double negative parentheses thing. And here I'm gonna take all of these, and again, the whole column, and check is that not equal to zero. So I'm basically multiplying both of those in this array formula. I'm gonna hit enter, and that should give me this. Actually, let me delete a couple of other columns here, sorry. So now we should have this on one line so you can see what's going on. So that's our multiplication that will only give us one when both of these are filled in. And if one of them is missing, it's just gonna give us zero. See, this is zero, this is zero, this is zero. These are our ones. So now because we have this, and it works similar to what we need to get with our or statement, we can take this whole thing. I'm not including this last parenthesis because that's for array formula and not the first parenthesis again, because it's for array formula. I'm gonna do Control X or Command X to cut that. And here I'm gonna start my if statement again. I wanna check if the result is one, then I want to do my formula because we know both of them are there. And otherwise I want to do the other one. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna paste this test inside of that if statement. And I don't have to check if that equals to zero because in if statements, ones are automatically true and zeros are false. And that's exactly what we used to get, one and zero. So if that is one, comma, that means we should do the formula. So I'm gonna grab this column and divide it by this column, just like that, comma. Otherwise, I wanna leave it blank. So I'm gonna do double quotes to leave it blank otherwise. I'm gonna close if function with this parentheses and finally, the other parentheses closing our array formula. So we're gonna keep it there and I'm gonna hit enter. And you should be able to see how I have an array formula that drops this formula down. It only works for cells where both of these are filled in. Doesn't work in all the other cases. I'm just gonna delete these columns now because I don't need them anymore. 
So now anytime I enter some value here, because both of them have a value, it will work. Same thing here. And if I remove any of this, it will stop doing this because one of the values doesn't exist. So that's a couple of examples of doing automatically auto filling columns using array formulas. Hopefully that was helpful. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.